بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, cherisher and sustainer of the world the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment All praise is due to Allah and Allah's peace and blessings be upon his last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his pure family, his loyal companions and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the day of judgment, Amin. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Mufarridun have gone ahead of everyone else. They are the forerunners. So who are those Al-Mufarridun? The outstanding forerunners in Islam. When you hear this word from the Messenger وسلم, a person might think those are the martyrs, those are al-shuhada, those are those who pray at night for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, those who fast for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, those who spend a lot of charity in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on and so forth. All kind of great ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. But the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, clarified this point. The Sahaba asked him, who are those al-mufarridun? The Messenger وسلم, said, those are the ones who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, males and females. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, males and females. Those are the forerunners in the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the easiest worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the most rewarding and most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dhikr, remembrance of Allah. Sadly, most people are not doing enough dhikr. Now the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said a lot. And this a lot, too much, is actually meant. I was every Muslim remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but little. But here we are talking about those who remember subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. This is a great ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. So much so that he ordered the prophets and messengers to do it. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the order to Zakariya alayhi salam to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise him in the evenings and in the mornings. Again here a lot in the evenings and in the, in the mornings. The same was given to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I remember the name of your Lord in the evenings and in the morning. And the same order was given to the followers of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said about the believers, remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala a lot of remembrance and glorify him with the praise in the mornings and in the evenings. So as you see the concept of a lot is meant to be. And now uh, some scholars mentioned that the minimum of a lot so that you will reach, you are among those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot is 300. However, for dhikr in general, there is absolutely no limit whatsoever. For every ibadah in Islam, you find the time or a place or a form or restriction and so on. Right? But this is not the case for dhikr. Dhikr is required from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. And at all situations and in all forms and we see this order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the Holy Quran speaking and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while standing while sitting and while laying on your side and remember we have seen before in the mornings and in the evenings at all time so at all times all situations all places you are required to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All other worships, all worships, the main goal of it is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Allah said about the dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is greater than any other ibadah. Dhikr is greater than any other ibadah. So easy, so simple. You can do it at any time at any place, in any situation, and it is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned an example of this love by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to it. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, when a person remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty responds to him and affirms what he is saying. When he says, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah, Allah Almighty says, He has said the truth, there is no God but I. 
And when he says, La ilaha illallah wahdahu, there is no God but Allah Almighty alone, Allah Almighty responds, There is no God but I alone. And when he says, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, Allah Almighty will respond and says, There is no God but I alone without any partner. And when he says, La ilaha illallah walahu alhamd, Allah Almighty will say, There is no God but I and the praise is mine or for me. And when he says, La ilaha illallah wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah, Allah Almighty responds and says, There is no God but I and there is no power or might except with me or with my help. So can you imagine that it is so beautiful and so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it's presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Almighty responds. Furthermore, the Messenger وسلم, said, anyone who says it in his sickness then dies, the hellfire will not be able to touch him. Simple about that. It will take you a few seconds. Anytime you don't feel all right, you don't feel well, you feel sick, say it. In case, God forbid, this is your death. This, this was your deathbed, your death sickness. Allah Almighty has guaranteed that hellfire will not be able to touch you. Let alone, let, you know, you, in some of the other dhikr and ibadah, it's mentioned that the person will eventually be admitted into paradise. But here, Allah Almighty is giving you an even bigger purpose. So the, the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this time is that hellfire will not be able to touch him. Subhanallah. That is how beautiful it is. Furthermore, dhikr is one of the ibadah that is raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fast, quickly. Presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quickly. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise it the good speech or the good talk. The good talk is subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, or any other form of dhikr and ibadah. However, what makes this dhikr presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Actual righteous deed. So if someone is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, but he's not doing righteous deed. So there is not something weighty, actual thing, actual tangible practices in his real life to raise it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty mentioned this in the same verse. After that he says, and the righteous deed raises it. The righteous deed raises it. So you need to combine both of them together. And that is why in our ibadah, every single action or ibadah in Islam is filled with dhikr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it is salah, when you are standing, you start dhikr, or even before. And in every position in salah, you say dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you end with dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then followed by dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on. The same for wudu, the same for fasting, the same for hajj, the same. Every kind of ibadah that you do is actually linked to dhikr one way or the other. That is how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, rewards for it. On the other hand, there are some of the dhikr that are linked to specific times or specific situations. And we can mention an example of it. The Messenger وسلم, said that anyone who enters his house by saying Bismillah, how simple is that? Half a second, Bismillah, or one second, that's all. What will happen? Shaitan and his followers will not be able to enter this house. They will not be able to enter. So Shaitan will tell his followers, there is no place to stay in this house. And if he start eating and mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again the minimum is saying Bismillah while eating. Everybody in the house, every single person in the house. Saying Bismillah, Shaitan will not be able to eat with him. So Shaitan will tell his followers, there is no place for you to stay and there is no food to eat. If they enter the house forgetting to say Bismillah, Shaitan will tell his followers, you have a place to stay. Free accommodation for the night. Shaitan will be your, yeah, your guest tonight. How lucky are you then? What will happen in this family? What do you expect? And then you are surprised. Why so many problems in the family without any reason? You think about it, what happened? Nothing. So why? Because Shaitan is with you. You forget that. That is his main duty, his main job. His main job is to try to create problem within the family, separate husband and wife. That is his main goal. Before making a person drink wine or commit adultery or something bad or whatsoever, this is actually his main goal. The way to protect yourself? Simple. Bismillah. 
every single person in the family whenever you are entering just say bismillah and when he starts eating and he neglects or forgot to say bismillah shaitan will tell his followers you have a place to stay and you have food to eat this is free accommodation with lunch and dinner and everything it's ready for you so that is the importance of dhikr, dhikr in real life as well not only in the here and after and the messenger وسلم, also gave us other examples when leaving the house now saying bismillah is the minimum but it is recommended to see actually three say three things bismillah tawakkaltu ala allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah remember this memorize it you and the rest of the family bismillah tawakkaltu ala allah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah very simple now what happens when you say this while leaving the house the angels will tell him you have been guided you have been protected you have been sufficed for all your needs it's given mashallah guidance and protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sufficiency for all things now interestingly some of the shaitan will hear him and they will step aside from him they do not approach him even but the other shaitans who were not present they are seeing him walking there and try to attack him now, try to seduce him or whisper to him some bad thoughts or whatsoever. Then the shaitans that heard it in the beginning, they will come and say, there is no way you cannot approach this person, you cannot harm him because he is guided, he is sufficed and he is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three single words. Short, it will take you a second or two. And that's it. So simple, so much rewarding from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The subhanahu wa ta'ala should keep it in, your, in his mind all the time. Another thing today is to say one of the beautiful and short dhikr that has lots of benefit is Ayatul Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum till then. Now the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said anyone who says it, shaitan will not be uh, able to approach him for the full night. And if he say it in the morning, he will not be approach, able to approach him for the full day. Give you full day protection, whether you are inside or outside the house, not only when you are out or something, at all times. So it will give you full protection day and night another thing that you need to keep in mind one beautiful dhikr that will take probably a minute or a minute and a half so simple and so easy subhanallah wa bihamdih memorize this subhanallah wa bihamdih repeat it 100 times the Messenger وسلم, said, anyone who says in a day, Subhanallah wa bihamdi 100 times, all his sins will be forgiven. All his sins will be forgiven, even if they were as much as the form of the sea. No matter how much. His whole sin for the day, for a minute or a minute and a half. Subhanallah wa bihamdi repeated this 100 times. That is why every wise person every wise person should end his day by saying this before sleeping just a minute a minute and a half and you will sleep sin free inshallah with the mercy and generosity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us another thing that is important for you is dhikr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it instill peace and tranquility and harmony within your heart and soul you will feel tranquil you feel peaceful you feel uh, more relaxed you will not be agitated regardless of whatever problem that might happen around you. You will still be in control of your feeling and emotion. Nowadays, many of the time, mashallah, we are seeing many of the psychological problems among Muslims. Due to pressure from work, from financial problems, neighbors, work, family, etc. Whatsoever the reason. Yes, the, these are reasons. But actually the main reason why you are reacting in this way is because you don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are not understanding the concept. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this about those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their heart feel tranquil by it. Verily, with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hearts do feel tranquil. That is how you get this kind of, of, of serenity, this kind of peace inside, this kind of tranquility in your heart uh, and mind. Final advice from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to the Messenger وسلم, and asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the, the guidance in Islam and the injunctions in Islam are so much, they became so much to me. I do not know where to concentrate. There is a lot of ibadah, lots of sunnah, lots of nawafil, lots of 
so much. So tell me about something that I will stick to, something I will hold on fast to it. Only one thing. Only one thing so that I will concentrate all my effort on this one. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let your tongue be moist with the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala all the time. Let your tongue be moist with the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Whenever you are free, whenever you, are, you don't have anything to say, you are in a waiting line, you are driving, you are in a rush hour, you are uh, waiting in a queue to pay a pill or to, to buy something, you are walking around. At any time, you feel you are not doing anything, keep your tongue busy. With what? With the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Simple advice from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I believe. So simple. So simple. But so much rewarding. That is how you will be among those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. That is how you will be among those who are al-mufarridun, the forerunners. They distinguished among this nation of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah Almighty make us among those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot day and night and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among al-mufarridun and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the companion of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the highest firdaus in paradise may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the companions of the prophets and the messengers and the righteous may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill peace and security and tranquility in our hearts and in our minds in all our action and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to his divine truth make us good for ourselves and everyone around us Ameen wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira.